Hello, and welcome to another episode of Dave Trippin' Dave Walks in the Rain Edition. I should probably just splurge on the 200 yen and get an umbrella, but whatever. So, I wanted to talk about the impact, the many impacts of VR, or virtual reality in Japan. But first, I gotta talk a little bit about VR to sort of set the scene as to how things can change and just so you can know more about the subject if you don't already. So as of 2016, the world will forever change and I think in a way that's similar to how significant the impact of the internet was for social change. Uh, and a lot of people don't see that quite yet because they have a couple of misconceptions about uh, virtual reality. The, uh, the two big sets coming out this year are going to be the Oculus Rift uh, from Facebook, not from, but they bought the project and then have developed it with a large amount of money. Uh, and the other is the HTC Vive, which is kind of being sold as like a premium headset, but it's still up in the air, which is going to kind of dominate the market. So you have these two headsets coming out and you have misconceptions about virtual reality. So the, these two misconceptions are, these two big ones are that virtual reality as a platform will be used mostly for gaming, that's the first misconception, and I'll explain why that is. And the second is that virtual, rea virtual reality is naturally socially alienating, which is, in my opinion, actually the exact opposite. And I'll explain that's kind of the root of this whole video and its connection to Japan. So imagine this, you, everybody knows about Twitch. If you don't, Twitch is a streaming service where you can play games and you can stream them. But a recent advent, a recent extension of Twitch streaming is Twitch Creative, where if somebody wants to do anything creative, they can stream it. For example, if they're working on some 3D art, if they're working on art, if they're cooking, it's actually like crazy up in the air what it is that they're capable of doing. Uh, and this led me to think about how VR will affect creative mediums. So one thing that I'm going to link in the video, which is amazing, if you don't get inspired by this video, it's, uh, you have no soul. <laughs> um, this video is done by one of the lead illustrators for Disney, who worked on The Beast, who worked on Ariel. One of the things that's going to be bundled with the HTC Vive version, or not version, but a uh, hardware, is an art program that allows you to create art in a virtual space in 3D so you can walk around your art project, you can, um, you can animate it afterwards, you can do incredible things. Now imagine streaming that footage. You could be the first person who streams live virtual reality which makes it an incredible medium for artists and an incredible way for them to connect with their audiences. Their audiences could then connect to this room that would allow them to, to watch their artist live perform and in a way like that they'd never felt before. They would feel a presence to the artist. They would be in that space with them virtually, but nonetheless, you would still feel that. You know, it's arguable whether that's the same or isn't, that you are in the exact same space. But you could connect in a way that you can't imagine. I've actually tried to pipe this idea to my brother, who's an incredible artist, where I said, man, I think you could be a pioneer of this new incredible medium. So that's one example, this artistic medium that's on release going to be available from the HTC Vive. It's going to be creative. So that's one aspect of it that people misunderstand. The other, like I was talking about, is sort of a social alienation because we use virtual reality, where people imagine these headsets on with this like glazed open mouth and never ever speaking to people again and disappearing into their own private worlds. Now, this is where I think that it completely has a huge impact on Japan and it's going to be completely misunderstood. So first I'll talk a little bit about racism, kind of the mechanisms of racism. Uh, now people are probably better suited, but I can point out a few things. Racism initially happened, uh, one of the major reasons, without going into a three hour long discussion, is uh, economic mechanisms, economic forces, where you would hire slave labor, created slavery, created racism. But then, as time progresses, one of the things that is most, most, uh, most creative, most, uh, most responsible for racism, more in the present world, 
is a thing you known as othering or by that's a fancy word for basically saying I don't know you you're not familiar with that ethnic group and they look unfamiliar to you and so you're only used to seeing people who are like yourself and it makes it easier to then separate yourself and other that person that you don't know now imagine a world where the children have all grown up being able to enter virtual spaces where they could look like anybody, be any gender, have any tone of skin, look like an orc, look like a dragon, look like an Asian person, look like a Caucasian person, a black person. Imagine the sort of impact that would have on your social mindset. It would do a lot to reduce othering. You couldn't think of people as other because You've only ever seen yourself in a thousand different bodies. You've only ever seen others in a thousand different bodies. And so you would actually have a huge social growth that would happen because of this, because people would connect all around the world and not just connect like we have now in video games where you play off against each other and there's still this distance that you feel. God, it's cold. I could have worn more. <laughs> um, you'll actually feel this presence next to this person. They've done studies, you will feel an empathy for this person that you share a virtual space with. Now that's the beginning of it, is that you can enter this space right away and not feel so distant from that person and see them in all these different forms that would reduce the impact of othering. But in addition to this, imagine as well as translative programs improve, which they're basically at. I would say in the next three years, they should have perfect translation. Somebody can call me on that, but that's a feeling I have when I look around at the different news articles talking about machine learning and their ability to understand languages and translate them. Now, imagine not only that, but that's why I think this has such a huge impact in a place like Japan, which is a monoculture, which has a very limited ability to communicate with the rest of the world, especially when you compare things like uh, English, their English scores, for example, could go into one of these social spaces and have programs that automatically translate for them. I think it'd be a great platform to just create a chat system where you enter a room and you would just speak to somebody in the virtual space and you have this program in the background that's translating for you where if anybody in Japan wanted to know something firsthand about another culture, that person in the other culture would then join to this chat room, this virtual space, and make themselves available for a chat, and you no longer have the language barrier that is another reason that people can't connect. You can, the hugest thing, of, one of the hugest things about feeling separate from someone as well, is language, and that language barrier would come down as well. So the Japanese, any kind of monoculture, I see it especially having an impact in Japan because they are a monoculture. They do have this particular language barrier, but any culture like Japan would also benefit from it. So I see really, really bright things in the future for VR. I don't see it as alienating. I see it as bringing us together. I see it having a, an especially good impact on somewhere that's a monoculture that struggles with language barriers. And I see it as the great new creative medium where artists will be able to connect with their audience in a way that has never before been imagined. And it's going to be interesting. So if you like videos like this, please do like, subscribe, and share. And uh, drop a comment down below. Let me know what do you think will be the impact of VR. What are your fears? What are the things you're excited about? Are you going to go with the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive? Or you're probably going to do what I'm going to do, which is wait till the second generation when they improve because you already know that they're working on the second generation while they're working on the first. Uh, anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Ciao for now. Peace.